When I was a kid, this used to be my favourite place in the whole world. I think this would still be my favourite spot. That's because you haven't been anywhere. Oh, so where's better than this then? Paris. Well, so let's go. We could get on the Eurostar right now. You don't get it, Clark. I want to be in Paris as me. The old me. I cried like an absolute baby. You did. And I, and I would describe the cry like a Kim Kardashian ugly cry. <laughs> so on a scale of one to Kim Kardashian ugly cry, um, how did you cry the very first time you read the book or the screenplay? Oh, definitely Kim Kardashian all the way. Mm. Yes. An ugly cry. Yes. It was a proper snot-covered cry. Oh, nice. Yeah, which is not helpful because I was filming Terminator at the time. Okay. They don't like that. Sarah Connor doesn't have that cry. No, I was going <laughs> to say, she's tough. And yes. that actually leads perfectly into my next question because this character is very different to anything you've ever played before and I think yeah. people were quite... It, they really related to you because she's a real girl. Authentic emotion. Yeah, exactly. I think there's something... Well, I felt incredibly, li incredibly liberated being able to play Lou, being able to kind of have this... Um, a modern telling of a story, for one thing, for me, because I'm always some 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 other time frame. Yeah, but the biggest thing is that there was just being able to be free, that freedom of expression, that freedom of kind of um, not being placed on a mantle, you know? It was very down to earth, which I loved. And Sam is just phenomenal. I mean, yes. not bad to look at. Yes, Sam. I know, I, mean, I know. <laughs> we're not going to complain. I've always wanted to ask, what is it like when you're in the casting process and you meet up with this person for the very first time and you guys audition together? What was that like for you? Well, all it, what we had is we had chemistry reads. So I auditioned with five other guys and he auditioned with five other girls. So it was, it's a weird, it's just weird. It's one of those things that like people who aren't actors are like, what? You just went in and like checked chemistry with a bunch of guys? I'm like, yeah, it's like life. Yes. It's like just speed, it's speeding up life. I mean, we're just going through being like, do I like you? Yeah, I do, okay. <laughs> yeah, but you guys do genuinely have fantastic chemistry. You can see it, you can tell off screen and oh, I really you. enjoyed it. Thanks. After playing Finnick O'Dear in the action packed Hunger Games films, for actor Sam Claflin, portraying a man paralyzed by a motorbike accident required a dynamic emotional performance with very limited physical expression. As an actor, I think to, to, to kind of portray someone who's very complex and complicated first and foremost but also I think not only were there their mental and emotional challenges of course there's the obvious physical challenge which I wasn't fully aware of how difficult it would be uh, and how much it would push me and uh, of course the story that we're telling that the subject matter the, the, the sort of issues that we're dealing with were very, so sort of beautifully crafted that I you know you couldn't help but fall in love so it, it, yeah, for me, it's it's a dream. It's a it's a real dream. We'll make a memory out of it. Lose the scarf. If you're gonna wear a dress like that, Clark, you have to wear it with confidence. Only you, Will Trainer, would tell a woman how to wear a dress. Where did the idea come from, and what message did you want to to say, and what did you want to put out with the book and the movie? Well, when I was thinking about this writing the next book. I had two relatives at the time who required 24-hour care just to stay alive. And I think if you deal with that situation as a family, you are asking yourself daily questions to do with quality of life and how to give someone pleasure and hope and dignity in a situation that really doesn't have any. And while this was all going on, I was driving home one day and I heard a story on the news about a young man, a sportsman, who'd been left quadriplegic after an accident and who had persuaded his parents to take him to a centre for assisted suicide. And I found this just deeply shocking. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand his thinking or their thinking. But as a writer, I, I, I like the things to which there are no correct answers. You know, there is no answer here. We're just posing a question. What would you do if you were him? What would you do if you were his mother? What would you do if you were somebody who was desperate to change his mind? And I guess that's what we're trying to do here. You know, this is an issue that's coming up more and more in society. This is just one man's story. It's gotta get easier and easier. These are career-defining performances by both Sam Claflin and Amelia Clark. This tear-jerking audience favourite opens in South African cinemas tomorrow. Call it, call it, call it.